Hello again, friends. Um, so if you are watching the replay, you might wanna fast forward just a couple minutes while everybody logs in. Um, so while I'm live right now, I'm gonna wait for you guys to come in the room and get to know who is with us tonight. So um, I'm super excited to be back with you guys again this Wednesday. Um, we're gonna be talking about the scoreboard and if you've been playing the scoreboard, great but as you know in whole brain teaching coach changes things a lot so we have a brand new version of our scoreboard that is not even in the fast track book yet so you guys are getting like insider info on the brand new scoreboard so hey Melissa Melissa is a whole brain teaching staff member she's here to help I see Stephanie just came in hey Stephanie um, as you guys come in hi Shirai um, congratulations on your job Rhonda hello as you guys come in, let me know um, where you're from, what grade do you teach, and I might as well introduce myself. So I am Heidi Martin, and I am a first grade teacher in Wisconsin and Whole Brain Teaching Executive Board member. Um, and I've been using Whole Brain Teaching for six years, and I would never use anything else. So um, quick story before we start. Um, hi, Becky. Uh, we have a fourth grade teacher who is currently out and currently we're all doing sub rotation. And so I had to go in there today and you know, I'm first grade teacher. So you guys know how it is. If you're third, fourth or fifth, you don't like to go to K12 and same for K12. We don't like to go upstairs. Um, so I had to go up to the fourth grade classroom and I just decided, you know what? And this was at the very end of the day. I just decided, you know what? I'm going to use some whole brain teaching and it worked. So I only had 40 minutes to do what I could and whole brain teaching just was amazing. And I did use a scoreboard um, just in 40 minutes um, for the first time them being introduced to it. So hello, California, Australia, Texas, um, Nancy, thank you for being here. Nancy um, is the director of certification for whole brain teaching. She knows everything about everything, so watch for her comments, because if I say something um, not completely correct, or uh, if I link to something, Nancy will throw it in the comments. So, um, and, oh, Melissa, you've been doing whole brain teaching since power teaching, that's amazing. Um, it used to be called power teaching a long time ago, and then it switched to whole brain teaching. So, I am so happy to have all of you guys here today, and again, we're gonna be talking about scoreboard with all of its fabulous updates. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, and I just wanna let you guys know, in a way we have completely simplified the scoreboard. So we, um, the way that it always was, was there was different levels to the scoreboard. And I'm just gonna show you, let me see if I can turn the camera around real quick. Yep, here we go. All right, so if you're not familiar, here's the scoreboard. It might look a little bit different to you, but it's always been where we do um, smileys versus frownies. Sorry, guys. Smileys versus frownies and points. Okay, so when the kids are doing, the basis is that when the kids are doing what you want them to do, what they're supposed to be doing, they get a point on the smiley side. And it's a mighty oh yeah, it's a one second party. So you say mighty oh yeah, and they say oh yeah, and then they're back and ready to go again. All right, so that is the one second party when they're doing a good job. When most of your kids are doing a good job, it does not have to be 100%. If you have some friends who are not doing what they're supposed to do, and here's where I kind of love the peer pressure, um, you give them a mighty groan, and you, there, it's a big mighty groan, so their shoulders come up to their ears and then they drop down and they do mm, like a big mighty groan and it should be fast. All of this should be fast. So their mighty oh yeah should be fast and their mighty groan should be fast. So you may have to practice um, mighty oh yes and mighty groans a lot. So with the fourth grade class that I did today, they need a lot of practice, but you know, they were getting it, it's okay. Um, so mighty oh yes and mighty groans. So um, when you're doing mighty oh yes, you can do it for anything. Um, you can do it for anyone. You can call out a name if you need to, like for your beloved rascals, sometimes this works is to say, oh, I love how Johnny is sitting nicely. Everybody mighty oh yeah. Um, but for a mighty groan, you never want to single out a student. So you never want to, um, call out a single student and say, oh, Johnny isn't sitting right, mighty groan for everybody. You just wanna say something like, oh, I have some friends over here who are still looking like turtles, mighty groan. 
Um, they know who they are. Most people know who they are. Sometimes the kids will give them a little look, um, but then you know you can go right back. Oh, but I love how they fixed it, or I love how somebody's doing a great job. Mighty Oya oh yeah. and Stephanie. Yeah, it's super fun to practice for Mighty Oyas oh yeah and Mighty Groans because then you get them going really fast, and we call that ping ponging. So we say Mighty Oya, oh yeah, Oya, oh Oya, yeah, Oya, oh yeah. and then we do a couple Mighty Groans, and they're getting they're getting the hang of it and then they're going faster with it too, which is what you want. So you don't want to take, you want to keep the train moving. You don't want to take a lot of time away from instruction. So, um, all right, I see some more people coming in. So hello from New Jersey and Cleveland. I hope you're going to join us, Melanie, at our Cleveland conference this summer. All of the Hobering teaching staff um, and board members, I believe, will be there. So uh, join us for any free conferences if you can this summer. Um, Coach will be talking more about the brand new scoreboard there. So the way that the scoreboard used to work is mighty oh yes, mighty groans. After 10 wins, so if they have, at the end of the day, more uh, mighty oh yes than mighty groans, you add that up, and if they have more, then they win, and it counts as a class win. After 10 wins, they level up. So it used to be levels. So level two um, might have been just uh, adding... I forgot what level two was, uh, if anybody knows what level two was, but you know, boys versus girls, or actually teachers versus students, so it's you versus them, and then maybe level three is boys versus girls, level four adds in different colored markers, level five, and, there, and then we added a spinner in, so it was infinite levels. We kind of found that this was just a little bit um, hard for teachers to grasp, so, so when you're just starting the scoreboard, just keep it mighty oh yeah, mighty grown, and that was easier. So Coach came up with an amazing way to do the scoreboard so that it never gets old because he added in a dice roll. So let me know in the comments if you've done dice rolls with your students and how much they love it. So if you didn't know, the dice roll activates the nucleus accumbens, which is deep inside our brain, and the nucleus accumbens activates pleasure and that is all like the whole Vegas thing, right? We go to Las Vegas, it's the unexpected, it's the uncertain reward. So that's why people, uh, we don't go to Vegas because we know we're gonna win or because we know we're gonna lose. We go to see what's gonna happen. So when you roll a dice, um, just like gambling, right? You don't know what's gonna happen and it's just the anticipation of what's gonna happen. It keeps the kids on their toes just like it keeps us on our toes. So the new scoreboard, is split into four sections. So the idea is you play the first section, the first part of your day, okay? And then, um, Nancy, I don't know if you can put that that um, picture of the scoreboard in the comments. It might be easier for people to reference it um, instead of me keep on turning the camera around. I can show it this way. It's just gonna be backwards a little bit, but see how it's split into four sections? So the first game that you play is in the beginning of the day. If the kids have more smileys than frownies, they roll a dice and their lucky number is one. And if the one comes up, everybody gets a super improver star. Okay, so it all ties in back together with our super improver team. Um, and yes, how the faces become hopeful as soon as you pick up the dice. Um, and yes, your kids beg for a dice roll, you guys. So look at these comments. It is dice work. Like it just keeps them on their toes. You could just go over. I noticed like I can go over and just touch the dice and they're like, oh wait, she's going to roll the dice, you know, and then just walk away and just tease them that way. But, um, so they're playing for dice rolls really. And so it makes the scoreboard simplified for you and super exciting all year long for them. So then, um, your second part of your day and you... The, the hardest part, I think, is figuring out how to break these up throughout your day. So it depends on how your day is structured. Um, so then the second part, okay, now we're on to a new game. This is game two. If you get more smileys than frownies in game two, we get to roll the dice and your lucky numbers are one and two. So you're getting an extra lucky number. And same for three, but now the lucky dice roll numbers are one, two, and three. And then, you guys, this is where Coach is so genius because... For game four, it's at the very end of your day. That's when everybody's losing energy, right? I know for me, it's like after lunch. You eat lunch and you're like done. Like I'm ready to go home and take a nap and the kids are too. It's just hard to keep that momentum going through the afternoon. So the last part of your day is the most fun and energetic part of your day to play the scoreboard. Because if they win the scoreboard in the last part of the day, they have four chances to win a super improver star.
So their lucky numbers on the last part of the day is one, two, three, and four. Okay, so it's never five, and six is always a re-roll in whole brain teaching. Um, it always has been. So whenever it lands on a six, you re-roll. Um, so if they get the dice roll and the numbers don't come up, we use a chant that's our grit chant and it says, we've got grit, we don't quit. So they say that my kids know right away. So as soon as I roll the dice and I say the number and it's not the number, they go ahead right away and give their neighbors some grit. And we practice being super fast at giving their neighbors some grit because it doesn't leave time then for the aww and oh man and it just keeps that positive momentum going. Um, so I forgot what else I was gonna say about that. Oh, coach says also that um, in the beginning before Christmas, they should only win two out of the four games. So you're playing four games every single day. When you're done with game one in the beginning of the day, that game is completely done and now you're just playing game two. And this is also great for your beloved rascals because it gives them that chance all throughout the day. Sometimes if you only play one scoreboard game, it's too long of a period of time for your rascals, right? They're like, I don't know if we're gonna win, I don't know if we're gonna lose, and I don't care anymore. So this is actually, breaking it up um, into those four games has actually been really beneficial for the beloved rascals as well. So before Christmas, they only win two out of the four games. Uh, after Christmas, they can win three or sometimes even four. All right, so I just gave you guys a whole bunch of new information on the scoreboard super fast. Do you have any questions so far? If you do, drop them in the comments. I will get to them or Nancy or Stephanie or Melissa. Um, I think Rhonda's in here too can um, answer some questions. So also to keep this going, you know that after Christmas and after spring break and the last week or month of school gets a little tough. So to keep this going, um, coach added in after Christmas you add in a green marker and that is double the points So whenever you pick up that green marker your kids are gonna be like oh my gosh She has the green marker because they know it's worth double So if you put on the mighty groan with a green marker that counts as two mighty groans If you put it on the mighty oh, yeah um, Side then it counts as two mighty. Oh, yes. So when you add up the game, they have extra points with that green marker um, I've used that before and sometimes I'll just go and I'll pick up the green marker and I'll walk around the room and then I'll just go set the green marker back down. And, but the kids straighten up real quick. They just, you just have to keep them on their toes. It's all, everything that whole brain teaching is about is to just keep them on their toes. Um, yes, Becky, try the dice. Just say, you know, just start with the dice roll and you will see how much the kids love it. Um, Shirai, I have a link to the dice that I use on my Instagram page. If you go to my Instagram profile, um, but I just get them from Amazon. So I get the big inflatable dice and sorry coach, he wanted me to have a dice here with me tonight and I totally forgot it at school. I'm gonna blame that on not having prep. So um, yes, Melissa, so after Christmas, you pull in the green marker. After spring break, you add in a blue marker. So now you have your regular black marker, your green marker for two points and a blue marker that counts as triple. So anytime you use that blue marker, they're getting three points. So if it's a mighty groan in a blue, that's three mighty groans. If it's a mighty oh yeah in a blue, it's three mighty oh yes. And then he says the last week of school, I might even throw it in there a little bit sooner um, for the red marker and that is worth five points. So anytime they pick up that red marker, you pick up that red marker, they're gonna go crazy because that's worth five points. And if, they're, if they think they're gonna get on the mighty groan side, they're gonna straighten up really quick. Um, so yes, different colors for tallies. Um, Elaine, it's not on Teachers Pay Teachers, but Nancy does have a link to, well, yes. Okay, our scoreboard is on Teachers Pay Teachers, but you don't have to do anything different for this one, except for add in the one, two, three, and four. Um, so I'll post a picture of what my scoreboard looks like in my classroom um, after I'm done with this in the comments so you can check that out. But you can get all that stuff in Teachers Pay Teachers and it's the same as before, you're just splitting it into the four levels. Um, so yes, so the blue marker, the green marker first for two points, then the blue marker for three points, and then the red marker at the very end of the school year when you need it the most is worth five points. Now, here's the rule for whole brain teaching scoreboard. You can never be more than three points higher or three points lower than the other side. So if you look at these 
scores, guys, they're close games, 5, 10, 15, 16 versus 15. Um, so this one, the first period they won, but it's only one point away. So your smiley side should never be more than three points higher than your frowny side, and your frowny side should never be more less or more than three points than your smiley side. Does that make sense? I said that all crazy. Um, but the main idea is that you keep the, the game close. And think of it like a sports game. So if you're watching a sports event and it's a blowout, Nobody cares anymore, right? They just go home. So if your scoreboard is a blowout, your kids aren't gonna care anymore. You have to keep that game super duper close so they are on their toes the whole time wondering if they're gonna win or not. Um, so keep that game within the three. It's our, our plus and minus three points rule. But now coach does realize that when you add in the red marker, it's gonna blow that rule out of the water kind of, but that's okay because it's very, at the very end of the school year and um, we need to do what we need to do, right? So, um, but for the most part, keep it within the plus and three minus rules. So, um, all right, any questions that I'm missing, anything that you guys want to know? Like I said, the Fast Track book has a scoreboard in it, but it also still has the levels. Um, if you are new to whole brain teaching, highly recommend Fast Track book or downloading for free WBT 3.0 on our Teachers Pay Teachers page. Um, at the beginning of the year, you divide the day into two games, then add the other two games later. Nope, it's always four games. So at the beginning of the year, they should just win two out of the four. So um, if you haven't used a scoreboard before, it's totally your way to manipulate your class. It's your way to use some peer pressure and you manipulate, you are really in charge of the scoreboard. You keep it close, but you decide when they're gonna win and when they're gonna lose. I've had some times where I look at my scoreboard and my class is winning and I'm like, what? How are they winning? They should not win. So, you know, I have to go over there and practicing, oh, that mighty groan was too slow. Or, you know, that mighty, oh yeah, was too slow, mighty groan. And give them points for how they're actually doing the mighty oh yes or the mighty groans um, to kind of even it up a little bit. So that's, your, your scoreboard is always gonna be into those four parts the whole year. Before Christmas, they should win two out of the four games. You're in control of when they win and when they lose. So they should be winning two out of the four. After Christmas, let them win a little bit more because that's when we need to really keep them on their toes. So um, thanks, I'm glad that made sense for you. <laughs> so I am. I feel like a crazy woman running around today with, it's just been a crazy day. So I feel like I'm talking too fast and that may be not clear. So I just wanna make sure that um, you guys understand this new scoreboard and what are your thoughts on it? I know I've seen some comments saying um, that you love the dice rolls, but this is a really new scoreboard. Um, Stephanie, are you using the new scoreboard yet? Rhonda, are you using this new scoreboard yet? We're still um, getting the hang of it in our classrooms. Um, I've been doing it for a little while. It took me a while to figure out how to break up my day. That was the hardest part for me, but my kids love it. And I was leveling up before and I just completely stopped that. And I was like, coach, they're gonna wanna level up but they really don't, they really don't care. They care more about the dice roll than leveling up. Um, so yeah, Melissa figuring it out and Stephanie's using it, I knew she was, so. Um, and okay, so Morgan's asking um, if she doesn't use super improvers, what could we put the win towards? Um, so Nancy, what do you think? Uh, Cause I'm not sure about that. Um, I know there's no, for sure, no treasure boxes, um, but if they win the dice roll, they should get something. Um, it just shouldn't be something tangible. So all of everything that we do with whole brain teaching is um, free. We want it to be free and we don't want to be giving out like stuff for the kids. We want it to be some, um, you know, they're working for stars and they will do that. Um, so some people are doing extra recess or a brain break, things like that. Um, and, and yeah, if you're not using Super Improver, I highly recommend starting it for next year. If you have this book, it's the very first thing now that coach put in here. So we are doing everything based off of Super Improvers now. And it's a great thing, you guys, if you're not already using it, because it's, you don't have to take a brain break. You don't have to take an extra recess. You don't have to do go noodle or think of any other fun things for the kids to win. 
they're just playing for a star on your super improver team. It also is a great way to hold yourself accountable for only rewarding for improvement instead of ability, which is so hard. And I still struggle with that and I've been using the Super Improver Team for six years and I still struggle with that. So um, Super Improver Team is absolutely amazing. I highly recommend if you didn't use it this year to look into it and start it for next year. Um, and yeah, Rhonda says give Super Improver a try. I know it's a little late in the year to do all that right now. So for now, yeah, extra recess or brain breaks or something like that works. Um, and if you are a class dojo, thank you, Becky. Um, we did just mer like, uh, there's some videos on our page about whole brain teaching with class dojo so we have um, graphics that we can use now sorry <laughs> uh, I have a great Dane and she's um, very protective of our house so I apologize guys um, and yes catching back up this summer that is always the goal right um, so I'm gonna continue these Wednesday night um, webcast and we have tons of free conferences if you aren't already going to them um, check them out on our website and if you are on Instagram make sure you follow whole brain teaching um, we're doing a lot of stuff there as well some just online trainings and reminders about games and different things that we do in whole brain teaching so um, and whole brain teaching on Teachers Pay Teachers is Whole Brain Teaching official store, so check that out. Um, and make sure if you go to Teachers Pay Teachers to buy super or scoreboard stuff that you don't pay for it. So if you do see something that's not in our store that's made by somebody else, do not pay for it. So everything from Whole Brain Teaching is free. Um, so thank you, Stephanie. Thank you all. Um, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, I'll put the picture of what my scoreboard looks like in the comments so you can kind of see what it looks like broken up and how the points are. Remember the plus minus three rule and um, I think that's it. So go get yourself some dice if you don't already have them. Everybody has always told me five below, but every single time I go to a five below, I can never find dice. There is never dice at a five below for me. And I've even looked whenever I'm out of town um, at their five belows and I've never found them. So if you are lucky and you can go to a five below and find yourself a dice, great. If not, um, like I said, they are on Amazon and the ones that I use are in my um, Instagram. So. Um, thank you all for being here tonight and I apologize for my dog and for my fast speaking but um, I hope you get the gist of the brand new scoreboard and like I said you guys just got inside information. I saw some of our staff on here that haven't even been using the new scoreboard yet so um, you guys are ahead of the game now. You have the inside information on the brand new way to play scoreboard and I hope you find it useful and I hope you're having a great um, end to your school year and make it fun and enjoy every moment. That's my motto. So have fun guys and I'll see you next week.